Okay, hi everyone. Uh, now we are going to talk about the SAT scoring system uh, because the SAT is scored a little bit differently than you're probably used to from most standardized tests or, or most tests that you take in high school. And it's got some interesting facets to it. So, and of course, if you understand the scoring system, it will help you gauge the proper response, uh, the proper approach that you should take to this test. So, uh, as you know, it's a multiple choice test. And uh, there's basically three different types of responses you can have on a multiple choice test. So you can one, do one of three things. Either you can get the problem right, you can get the problem wrong, or you can leave the problem blank. So uh, I use this, this symbol to, to stand for blanks. So, and then the amount of points that you get is dependent upon your response. Uh, now, the whole 200 to 800 thing, don't worry about that. Uh, the 200 to 800 is, is based upon what's called your raw score. Uh, and essentially, the higher your raw score, the higher your score on the test. So, don't you don't need to worry about this 800. Just worry about maximizing your raw score. Uh, so here's what you get in terms of your raw score, depending on your response to the question. So, if you answer a problem correctly, you get plus one point on your raw score. If you answer a problem incorrectly, you get minus a quarter point off your raw score. And if you leave a problem blank, you get nothing. You, you gain nothing, you lose nothing. Okay, so the one thing that really kind of confuses students from the get-go is this here. This, the fact that if you get a problem wrong, not only do you not get the points, but you actually get a quarter of a point removed from your score. Uh, that's kind of strange. You don't really see that happen in school. If, if you get a, a 10 question quiz, you don't see, you know, your math teacher doesn't, doesn't dock you points. He just doesn't give you those particular points for that test. Uh, but on the SAT, this is how it works. So we're going to talk about how, why they do this and how it, you know, once you understand this system, how it will affect uh, whether or not you guess on certain questions. So in order to do that, we need to talk about probability for a second. Okay, so I'm writing A, B, C, D, E uh, to sort of represent the typical, typical SAT question with five options, right? Uh, now, for those of you who have studied probability, right, uh, you, you could tell me that if you guessed completely randomly on any particular question, you have a probability of one-fifth of getting that question right. Okay, so that's important because uh, we want to consider a certain scenario, and I'll show you how it kind of plays out and, and how, this, how the scoring system affects the way uh, that your score is, is calculated. So let's say that uh, you're taking a test, and uh, you look up at the clock, and you only have 30 seconds left. Uh, and then you realize that you actually had five questions to go. Right? So you're taking the SAT, you have five questions left, and only 20 or 30 second, uh, seconds to finish them, so you don't, uh, you don't, you really don't have enough time to look at them closely. You can either guess or you can just leave them blank. Uh, so let's say that you decide that you're going to just guess on those five questions. Right? Now probability says that one out of every five times you're going to get uh, this question right. So let's say that on the first question you get it right, and then on the next four questions you get them wrong. Okay, so you get plus one point, minus a quarter point, minus a quarter point, minus a quarter point, minus a quarter point. Well, what does that add up to? Well, if I give you a dollar and then I take away four quarters, guess what? You get nothing. So this zero, right, is the reason why they actually take off a quarter point. Uh, because they, what the SAT wants to do is they want to remove any benefit that you might get from randomly guessing, right? From randomly guessing.
Right? Now, not every guess is a random guess. Let's say, let's change that scenario for a second. Let's say uh, now that you are able to eliminate for those last five questions, you have enough time that you're able to take a quick look at them and realize that C is not the answer choice for any of them. Okay? If you know that C isn't the answer choice for any of these, then all of a sudden your probability is no longer one-fifth, but one-fourth. Right? Meaning you're going to get one out of every four questions right. All right? So then, instead of getting one right and four wrong, right, you're going to get one right and three wrong, which actually adds up to a net gain of a quarter point. All right? Um, well, let's extend that, that line of thinking. Well, what if you can eliminate two answer choices? Well, that means that you're going to get one out of every three questions correct. Right? So then all of a sudden, we can eliminate this fourth choice, and for every three questions you answer in that manner, you will gain a half of a point. And then uh, the next best thing to getting a problem right is to be able to eliminate three of the answer choices and get it down to two, uh, if you get it down to two, then all of a sudden you're getting one out of every two problems right. So for every two questions you answer that way, you are gaining three quarters of a point. So as you can see, uh, what happens to a lot of students when they, when they see that you get this minus a quarter point off is what they think to themselves is, well, gosh, I don't want to lose points. So I'm not going to guess unless I, I definitely, uh, unless I definitely know the answer. Right, um, That's actually the wrong approach to take because, as you can see, even if you can eliminate one answer choice, the numbers are in your favor. Um, and, you know, a quarter point, a half point, it might not look like that much to you right now, but on a test that's 170 questions long, it's going to make a big difference. So basically, what I'm trying to tell you here is that guessing is not a bad thing. You know, even when... Even when you guess completely randomly, you don't lose any points. You just don't gain any points. Uh, so here are, the, here are the three things that I want you to take from this. Um, the first thing is that if you can eliminate guess. All right, there's no harm in guessing. Uh, the second thing is that guessing does not hurt your score. But that doesn't mean that you should answer every question. Uh, the final thing that I want you to realize is that, is that although guessing doesn't hurt your score, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily in your best interest to answer every question. Uh, most students, especially students who are scoring uh, below 50th percentile, can, one of the easiest ways to improve your score is to actually answer fewer questions. Uh, you need to find that right balance. Um, if you skip some questions, what that does is it gives you time for the other questions. Uh, you can avoid the harder questions and thus get yourself a higher score. So the one thing that really does hurt your score uh, is wasting time. So we're going to say wasting time on the wrong types of questions. does hurt your score. Um, and now, naturally, the, the question that follows up from that is, well, how do I know where the wrong types of questions are? And that leads directly into our next lesson about order of difficulty. So if you want to know how to avoid the hard questions, uh, just watch my next lesson on order of difficulty.